Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to start our first of the book series. Today we're looking at The War of Art. It's a guide to break through the blocks and win your inner creative battles. We're probably going to break this up into one or two chapters depending on their length. We're going to see how long each chapter is. We're going to skip the foreword because it's typically what I tend to do. Alright, <clears throat> so it starts with what I do. I get up, take a shower, have breakfast. I read the paper, brush my teeth. If I have phone calls to make, I make them. I've got my coffee now. I put on my lucky work boots and stitch up the lucky laces that my niece Meredith gave me. I head back to my office, crank up the computer. My lucky hooded sweatshirt is draped over the chair with the lucky charm I got from a gypsy in Saint Marie de la Mer for only eight bucks in fran francs and my lucky Largo name tag that came from a dream I once had. I put it on. On my thesaurus is my lucky cannon that my friend Bob Fasandi gave me from Morro Castle in Cuba. I point it towards my chair so it can fire inspiration into me. I say my prayer, which is the invocation of the muse from Homer's Odyssey Translation by T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, which my dear mate Paul Rink gave me, which sits near my shelf with the cufflinks that belong to my father and my lucky acorn from the battlefield of Thermopylae. It's about 10.30 now. I sit down and plunge in. When I start making typos, I know I'm getting tired. That's four hours or so. I've hit the point of diminishing returns. I wrap for the day. Copy whatever I've done to disc and stash the disc in the glove compartment of my truck in case there's a fire and I have to run for it. I power down. It's 3, 3.30. The office is closed. How many pages have I produced? I don't care. Are they good? I don't even think about it. All that matters is I've put in my time and hit it with all I've got. All that counts is that. For this day... For this session, I have overcome resistance. What I know. There's a secret that real writers know, that wannabe writers don't. And the secret is this. It's not the writing part that's hard. What's hard is sitting down to write. What keeps us from sitting down is resistance. The unlived life. Most of us have two lives. The life we live and the unlived life within us. Between the two stands resistance. Have you ever brought home a treadmill and let it gather dust in the attic? Ever quit a diet, a course of yoga, a meditation practice? Have you ever bailed out on a call to embark upon a spiritual practice? Dedicate yourself to humanitarian calling. Commit your life to the service of others. Have you ever wanted to be a mother, a doctor, an advocate for the weak and helpless, to run for office, crusade for the planet, campaign for world peace, or to preserve the environment? Late at night, you have experienced a vision of the person you might become, the work you might accomplish, the realized being you were meant to be. Are you a writer who doesn't write, a painter who doesn't paint, an entrepreneur who never starts a venture? Then you know what resistance is. One night I was laying down. I heard Papa talking to Mama. I heard Papa say to let that boy boogie woogie because it's in him and it's got to come out. John Lee Hooker from Boogie Chillin. Resistance is the most toxic force on the planet. It is the root of more unhappiness than poverty, disease and erectile dysfunction. To yield to resistance deforms our spirit. It stunts us and makes us less than what we are and what we were born to be. If you believe in God, and I do, you must declare resistance evil, for it pre prevents us from achieving the life God intended when he endowed each of us with our own unique genius. Genius is a Latin word. The Romans used it to denote an inner spirit, holy and inviolable, which watches over us, guiding us to our calling. A writer writes with his genius, an artist paints with hers, 
Everyone who creates operates from this sacramental center. It is our soul's diet, the vessel that holds our being in potential, our star's beacon and polaris. Every sun casts a shadow, and, and genius's shadow is resistance. As powerful as is our soul's call to realization, so potent are the forces of resistance arrayed against it. Resistance is faster than, than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, harder to kick than crack cocaine. We're not alone if we've been mowed down by resistance. Millions of good men and women have bitten the dust before us. And here's the biggest bitch. We don't even know what hit us. I never did. From age 24 to 32, resistance kicked my ass from east, east coast to west and back again 13 times. And I never even knew it existed. I looked everywhere for the enemy and failed to see it right in front of my face. Have you ever heard this story? Woman learns she has cancer, six months to live. Within days, she quits her job, resumes a dream of writing text mech songs. She gave up to raise a family or start studying classical Greek or moves to the inner city and devotes herself to tending babies with AIDS. Women's friends think she's crazy. She herself has never been happier. There's a postscript. Women's cancer goes into remission. Is that what it takes? Do we have to stare death in the face to make us stand up and confront resistance? Does resistance have to cripple and disfigure our lives before we wake up to its existence? How many of us have become drunks and drug addicts, developed tumors and neuroses, succumbed to painkillers, gossip, and compulsive cell phone use, simply because we don't do that thing that our heart, our inner genius, is calling us to do. Resistance defeats us. If tomorrow morning, by some stroke of magic, every dazed and benighted soul woke up with the power to take the first step towards pursuing his or her dreams, every shrink in the directory would be out of business. Prisons would stand empty. The alcohol and tobacco industries would collapse, along with the junk food, cosmetic surgery, and infotainment businesses, not to mention pharmaceutical companies, hospitals, and the medical profession from top to bottom. Domestic abuse would become extinct, as would addiction, obesity, migraine headaches, road rage, and dandruff. Look in your own heart. Unless I'm crazy right now, are still small voices piping up, telling you it has 10,000 times. The calling that is yours and yours alone. You know it. No one has to tell it to you. And unless I'm crazy, you're no closer to taking action on it than you were yesterday or will be tomorrow. You think resistance isn't real? Resistance will bury you. You know, Hitler wanted to be an artist. At 18, he took his inheritance, 700 kronen, and moved to, to Vienna to live and study. He applied to the Academy of Fine Arts and later to the School of Architecture. Ever see one of his paintings? Neither have I. Resistance beat him. Call it overstatement, but I'll say it anyway. It was easier for Hitler to start World War II than it was for him to face a blank square of canvas. So that ended up being the introduction. We'll start into book one in next episode. We're starting with a quote from the Dalai Lama. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.